The Bobcats are MAC tournament champions for the second time in three years and are heading to the big dance after a hard fought down to the wire victory over the Akron Zips Saturday evening, 64 to 63. How you doing folks? What a wonderful game play here tonight at Quicken Loans Arena, the MAC tournament championship. Ohio and Akron, two teams in recent history that have de developed quite the rivalry and the game certainly did not disappoint. Expecting a close game coming in, it certainly was. Expecting a chippy physical game early on, didn't disappoint there either. First half was very close, N neither team pulling away by more than four points. Ohio had as much as a four-point lead in the first half, but Akron was the ones taking a one-point lead into the halftime break. Akron in the second half built a 35-31 lead, but Ohio went on a 10-0 run sparked by three-pointers from Nick Kellogg, also TJ Hall, who's had an ex who had a really exceptional tournament coming off the bench, also a long-range jumper from Evo Baltic. All of a sudden, Ohio led 41-35. to They would never trail again, but do not let the fact they didn't trail with the fact that it was a close, hard-fought game down to the wire. Akron brought it all the way back to 51-50 to with seven minutes left. Alex Abreu played a great game tonight for the Zips. He kept Akron in it single-handedly. You could tell him and DJ Cooper, they developed quite a rivalry in the last couple of seasons. It almost looked like the Abreu and DJ Cooper show because after, after Abreu made it a 51-50 to game, DJ Cooper went on his own personal 8-0 run, sparked by a couple three-pointers, a steal and a layup, but his, his second three-pointer was perhaps the shot of the season for Ohio with the shot clock winding down, defenders draped all over him. DJ Cooper heaved one up and it went in, drained it. All of a sudden, Ohio had a 59 to 52 lead with just over six minutes left. It almost felt like destiny. This was Ohio's tournament to win, but Akron would not go away. Akron brought it all the way back to a one point game. On a layup from Zeke Marshall, it was a 62 to 61 score with a minute 43 left. The game hanging in the balance with just under a minute left to play. Coach Gross called a timeout for Ohio to talk things over with that one point lead. Ohio came out of the timeout, turned it over. A bad exchange between Evo and Offit. All of a sudden, Akron had the ball and control. They called timeout with 32 seconds left, down by just one point. Akron brought the clock all the way down to nine seconds. Brian Wall shot a jumper from the corner. He missed it, and Reggie Keeley, with the biggest rebound of the night, comes down with it. He's fouled immediately, setting up a one and one for the big fella. And Reggie Keeley, ice water in his veins, knocks down the front end, and then the second free throw. Ohio now had a three-point lead with just six seconds remaining. Akron got the ball, and Ohio elected to foul Alex Abreu, coming right off the pass, making him shoot the free throws, have to execute a free throw, and then a tip in. They almost pulled it off. He nailed the first free throw in the second one. The ball caromed off the back iron. Akron players trying to tip it in. The ball went through. There was a replay and an official review to see if an Akron player tipped it in or if the ball just went in on its own accord from the foul line. After a brief review, they called the free throw good, not a tip in. So Ohio had a one point lead at that point. And they fouled DJ Cooper immediately. He went to the free throw line. He missed the first free throw. Missed the second one, you can almost call it intentionally because it set up an Akron prayer at the buzzer that went unanswered. And Ohio, 64 to 63, your MAC tournament champions and heading to the NCAA tournament for the second time in three seasons. What a victory it was for Ohio after the game. Happy coach, happy players as you might expect, knowing that it took a season long worth of ups and downs to get to the point they are. But it only makes it taste that much sweeter for Ohio who certainly earned it Saturday night. That's one of the greatest feelings ever, you know. Uh, I haven't had this feeling since two years, obviously. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank God, you know, and uh, thank my teammates, you know, for helping me and, and uh, striving to get there. It's the best feeling in the world, man. Like, you work all year for, for something, man. You, you accomplish it. It's just, it just it's feel like a fantasy, actually. You dream about it the night before. You don't think you're going to really accomplish it like it's fake, but it's just here, man. We, we really did it, man. We got next year, too, so we feel pretty good. It's an unbelievable, it's an unbelievable feeling, man. I can't, I can't explain the way I feel right now, you know. After sitting out transferring from place to place, you know, and you know, being at Old State, coming from here, man, I, I envisioned and dreamed of a championship with Coach Gross and our team, and un unbelievable effort, man. There's, there's nothing like playing in the NCAA tournament other than advancing in the NCAA tournament. So we're, we feel blessed, um, a great opportunity for our kids, well deserved. You know, they've worked extremely hard, and I thought they play, had a gutsy performance tonight. Next up for Ohio, find out where they're going in the NCAA tournament, who they'll play, what their draw is. WOUB will have the selection show coverage for you online, woub.org backslash sports. Find out where Ohio is heading in the big dance and who they're playing. We'll have that for you there, and then we'll travel with the team in the NCAA tournament to bring you all the coverage. So Bobcat fans, get your dancing shoes on. The Cats are heading back to the dance. For the Bobcat Sports Showcase, I'm Blake Brody.